Section 14 of Talks by Abdul Baha given in Paris by Abdul Baha Abbas translated by Lady Sara Louisa Blomfield This is a LibriVox recording all LibriVox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org recording by Nicholas James Bridgewater Talks by Abdul Baha given in Paris by Abdul Baha Abbas Section 14 Spiritual Aspiration in the West November 6th Abdul Baha said You are very welcome From eastern lands I have come to the West To sojourn a while among you In the East it is often said That the people of the West Are without spirituality But I have not found it thus Thank God I see and feel that there is much spiritual aspiration among the Western peoples, and that, in some cases, their spiritual perception is even keener than among their Eastern brothers. If the teaching given in the East had been conscientiously spread in the West, the world today would be a more enlightened place. Although in the past, all the great spiritual teachers have arisen in the east there are still many men there who are quite devoid of spirituality with regard to the things of the spirit they are as lifeless as a stone nor do they wish to be otherwise for they consider that man is only a higher form of animal and that the things of god concern him not but man's ambition should soar above this he should ever look higher than himself, ever upward and onward, until, through the mercy of God, he may come to the kingdom of heaven. Again, there are men whose eyes are only open to physical progress and to the evolution in the world of matter. These men prefer to study the resemblance between their own physical body and that of the ape, rather than to contemplate the glorious affiliation between their spirit and that of god this is indeed strange for it is only physically that man resembles the lower creation with regard to his intellect he is totally unlike it man is always progressing his circle of knowledge is ever widening and his mental activity flows through many and varied channels look what man has accomplished in the field of science consider his many discoveries and countless inventions and his profound understanding of natural law in the world of art it is just the same and this wonderful development of man's faculties becomes more and more rapid as time goes on if the discoveries inventions and material accomplishments of the last fifteen hundred years could be put together you would see that there has been greater advancement during the last hundred years than in the previous fourteen centuries for the rapidity with which man is progressing increases century by century the power of the intellect is one of god's greatest gifts to men it is the power that makes him a higher creature than the animal for whereas century by century and age by age man's intelligence grows and becomes keener that of the animal remains the same they are no more intelligent today than they were a thousand years ago is there a greater proof than this needed to show man's dissimilarity to the animal creation it is surely as clear as day as for the spiritual perfections they are man's birthright and belong to him alone of all creation man is in reality a spiritual being and only when he lives in the spirit is he truly happy this spiritual longing and perception belongs to all men alike and it is my firm conviction that the western people possess great spiritual aspiration it is my fervent prayer that the star of the east 
will shed its brilliant rays on the western world and that the people of the west may arise in strength earnestness and courage to help their brethren in the east lecture given at a studio in paris november sixth this is in truth a bahai house every time such a house or meeting place is founded it becomes one of the greatest aids to the general development of the town and country to which it belongs it encourages the growth of learning and science and is known for its intense spirituality and for the love it spreads among the peoples the foundation of such a meeting place is always followed by the greatest prosperity the first bahai assembly that existed in tehran was singularly blessed in one year it had grown so rapidly that its members had increased to nine times their original number today in faraway persia there are many such assemblies where the friends of god meet together in the fullness of joy love and unity they teach the cause of god educate the ignorant and draw heart to heart in brotherly kindness it is they who help the poor and needy and give to them their daily bread they love and care for the sick and are messengers of hope and consolation to the desolate and oppressed o ye in paris strive that your assemblies may be like unto this and may bear even greater fruits o friends of god if ye will trust in the word of god and be strong if ye will follow the precepts of baha'u'llah to tend the sick raise the fallen care for the poor and needy give shelter to the destitute protect the oppressed comfort the sorrowful and love the world of humanity with all your hearts then i say unto you that ere long this meeting place will see a wonderful harvest day by day each member will advance and become more and more spiritual but ye must have a firm foundation and your aims and ambitions must be clearly understood by each member they shall be as follows one to show compassion and goodwill to all mankind two to render service to humanity three to endeavour to guide and enlighten those in darkness four to be kind to every one and show forth affection to every living soul five to be humble in your attitude towards god to be constant in prayer to him so as to grow daily nearer to god six to be so faithful and sincere in all your actions that every member may be known as embodying the qualities of honesty love faith kindness generosity and courage to be detached from all that is not god attracted by the heavenly breath a divine soul so that the world may know that a bahai is a perfect being strive to attain this at these meetings then indeed and in truth will ye the friends of god come together with great joy render help one to the other become as one man having reached perfect unity i pray to god that daily ye may advance in spirituality that god's love may be more and more manifested in you that the thoughts of your hearts may be purified and that your faces may be ever turned towards him may you one and all approach to the threshold of unity and enter into the kingdom may each one of you be like unto a flaming torch lighted and burning bright with the fire of the love of god end of section fourteen